Okay, it is coming on now. Let's see. Interesting. Sometimes this happens, so I apologize. <laughs> oh, no, listen, it's a live show. Morning, <laughs> Facebook. Thank you so much for joining. Good morning. I am so excited. Welcome to the Civilized Presence. You're definitely in the right place at the right time. Good morning. Um, just let me know where you're joining us from. Come on in and share this video. Um, on your page, uh, invite your friends and family to be part of what we're doing. It is going to be exciting. I have someone special in the house. Just give us a moment uh, so that Facebook can get this video visible to everyone. And um, I'm just trying to put this on your page. Uh, just give us one second. Um, okay, so this is interesting today. But this is going to be great. This is going to be fun. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Civilized Presence. Are you here for the first time? Welcome. Let me know where you're joining us from. Um, do us a favor and have this video on your page. Invite people to be part of what we're doing. Um, you can start up a watch party on your page. We're using a different platform this morning. But it is just going to be exciting, guys. I am so excited to um, just get things up and rolling. So welcome. Let me know where you're joining us from. Welcome, Akuswar. It's good to have you in the house. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really have to apologize that we came in slightly late uh, because of some technical difficulties. But believe me, it's going to be what the wait. So welcome to the Civilized Presence. You are in the right place. Come on in. Let us know where you're joining us from. Thank you. Thank you, Frank from Ghana for sharing the video. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Janet, for joining. Thank you, um, Camille. Thank you, Izzy from Canada. It's good to have you. Esther from Nigeria. It's so good to have you. Christy, thank you for joining. Uh, Tony, it's good to have you in the house. Thank you so much. Everyone, come on in. I have someone who is very special to us today. Um, I can see some of my GMT family just jumping in. Guys, come on in. It's good to have you. Thank you so much. It's a civilized presence. You are in the right place. We're here every Mondays and Fridays at 8 a.m. or 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. So if it is your very first time, welcome. Um, how did you get here? Did you see the post, the flyer? I want to say welcome. Thank you. Um, are you on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube? Are you watching it later? I have Helen all the way from Canada. Thank you so much for joining. It's so good to have all of you here. Guys, I have a different platform. So if I do not mention your name right away, it's just because I haven't seen your name yet. So you want to come into the video and just say a quick hello so I can give you a shout out um, because this is kind of slightly different from when we're using uh, the Be Live and welcome, Rosie. It's good to have you here uh, from the UK. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. I don't know how many of you might have seen the post for today or the flyer, but it is going to be fun. It's a topic that affects everyone. Um, I had a lot of great feedback um, on this topic, and guys, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you for responding. Now, Civilized Presence is an online TV session where lives are changed, where people discover themselves, their purpose, their voice, and of course, learn social skills to thrive in the real world. So if you want to become a change maker, you are in the right place. Now, you might be asking, uh, who is she? My name is Louisa Akaizo, and I am going to be your host for today. And of course, I feel so honored that you responded to the call, that you made it here. It's good to have you here, Rosie. Thank you so much. Thank you. Give us some hearts. Give us some thumbs up because I have my guests all the way from South Africa. So if we have some people from South Africa in the house or if you're from Africa, come on. Give us some thumbs up. Give us some hearts and say hello. Come on in. Um, let me just know where you're joining from. I know it's going to take a couple of minutes because people are used to seeing me on So Unique Experts. But I'm right here today on my personal page. Um, like I explained to you, we had some technical difficulties. So find your way back to my page. I'm right here and we're going to get this going. So thank you. Now, if it is your first time, 
um, you know, the civilized presence really was set up with a focus to help restore civility in our society. You will agree with me that civility is a lost art. There's so much pain and hatred all over in the world. And welcome Ambassador Jumar from Kenya. It's good to have you in the house. Thank you so much, Sarah, for making out time. So this is why we had to set up a platform where we can create an awareness of what civility really is by breaking it down into tiny little bits and getting people to understand how easy but important it is for you to be civil. And if you've been hanging out with me and welcome, Corey, it's great to have you. Welcome, Evelyn, it's great to have you. Guys, I love you so much and welcome, Sikhat. Welcome, Amen. Welcome, John. Welcome, Wenger. If I haven't called your name, just know that I have to go back to the deal of today, but I'm excited that you're here. So guys, if you've been hanging with me, I always explain to you or share with you that it's so easy, uh, like saying please and thank you, or good morning, or even share a compliment, uh, just like I'm going to do right now to Mr. Yan and say, Mr. Yan, it's so good to have you here this morning. Thank you so much uh, for being here. So guys, really what we're doing is to make it a lot easier because if you're able to grab something away from the session, then it was successful for me. Um, and so I find that so many of us are so tied up in our own space, in our tiny comfort zone that we refuse to even step out and reach out to other people. And this is why you have to hang out with me um, every week because I'm gonna share reasons in how you can do it. So if you've never said hello to anyone before, you've never been good to anyone, that's okay. You're gonna learn how to. Um, if you're in North America like me, um, I find that people do not say hello to their neighbors, which is very sad, um, but we, we've been living that way. And it's, it's so sad and then of course, the next thing something happens to your neighbor and everyone is asking questions and oh my gosh, she didn't really look happy yesterday, but did you say hello? So if you've never done it, that's okay, but we have to get in the lifestyle and we have to, you know, get used to reaching out to people, impacting people's lives, sharing kindness, just stretching out of your comfort zone is not all about you alone. And so let me share with you a definition of civility, one that I've chosen this morning that's simple enough. And that's from Dr. P.F. Funny. And this states that uh, being civil means being constantly aware of others and weaving restraint, respect, and consideration into that very fabric of awareness. So civility is focused on uh, gracious goodness, positive people's treatment paying attention to the person next to you, you know, refrain from idle complaints, apologize endlessly if you have to. Those are simple things. And you can even think about the golden rule, treating others the way that you want to be treated. Because I find that, you know, when you have to step away and ask yourself that question, if I was on the other side of the table receiving the same treatment, how would I feel? Right there, the light bulb comes on. And then you realize that you probably have to make some kind of adjustments and welcome Christine, it's great to have you. Um, you might have to make some adjustments with your habit, with your attitude, with your character. And this is what we do. So you see, it's, it, isn't that fun? It's just, it's just simple, it's just easy. And thank you so much, Christine. It's great to have you here. Welcome, welcome. Thank you uh, for making out time to be here. So some of you might have seen the flyer. I'm not going to assume that you did, but the topic of today really is sticks and stones breaking through the barriers of bullying. So before I get started, I'm going to tell you who is this amazing guest that I have today and why I'm so excited. Um, his name is uh, Mr. Yan Roberts and welcome David, my brother. It's great to have you here from Virginia. And let me tell you a bit about Yan. Yan is amazing. Apart from the fact that he's a colleague, he's someone that I look up to. Um, I love the work that he does, but let me give you a little insight on who he is and why he's the best person uh, to be sharing this topic with us. So having been bullied as a youngster, um, Yan was a, at a tender age of 17 onto a path of self-development, awareness, growth, and motivation in an effort to transform his life from the aftermath of the negative side effects that he had on his life. This was very pivotal me, uh, moment that determined the focus of his journey uh, 
uh, to impact as many lives as possible because of his experiences. Now, Mr. Roberts is a leadership coach, trainer, and an internationally renowned inspirational speaker who is personally mentored and trained to be a platinum speaker by Mr. Les Brown. He is an executive director and uh, presidential advisory council member with the John Maxwell team that's based in the United States. He is also the co-founder of Key Leadership Institute that's based in uh, Johannesburg, South Africa and in Vergarden, um, Scotland, UK. I hope I got that right. The, and, and of course, he runs a flagship uh, project in South Africa, which is called uh, Sustainable People Development Program that uses internationally developed values-based leadership program. And, you know, he has such a wide range of um, experience. Of course, he works currently in South Africa to impact every area of um, influence at every level and of all ages, whether it's families, it's young people, it's the corporate. He, he works with everyone. He, he organizes programs and good morning, Sikorni, it's great to have you here. He organizes programs on leadership development. He's also a coach. So if you're somewhere in Africa, if you're in UK, if you're in America and you want to work with Mr. Roberts, you're going to have access to him right after this session. That's after you've paid me. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> but you will have access to him. And I am so proud to say that he is one of the best that we have. I'm so proud to say that. And you're gonna find that out in a couple of minutes. Um, not just because he's part of the John Maxwell team, but he's amazing, guys. So you wanna hang on with us um, a little longer. Now grab your cup of coffee, um, grab some your bottle of water, whatever that you want. I have mine here. Um, I have something to drink here. And just get your pen and paper. It's time to learn. And let me go back to the audience. Welcome, Sikorni. It's great to have you. Welcome, Bella. It's good to have you. Welcome, Wager. It's good to have you here from Nigeria. Thank you so much. It looks like we're global this morning. We have quite different countries who are in here in the session today, and everyone is so excited to listen to you, Mr. Yan. Um, uh, so thank you so much, my friend, for being here. And I'm just going to give you a moment to say hello to the audience. Over to you, Mr. Yan. That's just Jan, please. Uh, and, you know, when we talk about technical difficulties, it wasn't we, it was me. Uh, here is where we go from <laughs> me, because I had the technical difficulties. And, uh, you know, if that's the worst we ever have, I think we're very lucky and fortunate. But, uh, you know, I I'm, I'm just feel really blessed to be uh, a guest on your show. I've, I've managed to watch it several times in the, in the last couple of weeks as well. And it's amazing how you... Uh, you bring out the best in people and that's why i'm here i need the best that brought out of me and, and you're the person to do it but uh, to 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 talk about civility and all that's, that that it entails we had a, a long conversation a while back and we probably would still be talking if we had a chance but you know it, it it is wonderful to be able to 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 talk about certain subjects and and this one is is close to my heart from from where i came from so to to be able to share that and, and it, uh, as, as it happened, I, I did a little bit more homework to update some of my stats as well. And, you know, it it it, I, it really hurts my heart to, to 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 see what is happening on a global scale, because this is not a problem in South Africa or America or the UK. This is a global phenomenon, which is, in my mind, not addressed sufficiently enough or hardly at all. Uh, so it, it's it's my privilege and pleasure to to be able to share some of this. Uh, particularly about this subject today, and uh, and you know it's it's wonderful to have so many people from around the world on your platform that 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 shows more about you than about me, and uh, you know because you you are such a bubbly person, you bring out you bring out the, the, the great questions, you 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 help and support people to be comfortable on this, even supporting me for the last half an hour before the call to make sure that we actually had a call, but you know it's it's wonderful, and and I look forward to this. I've been excited all week since we decided the date uh, because we've been talking about this for a while and so thank you very much and thank you for everybody on your platform for joining us today in this wonderful friday thank you so much i am more excited and and, and so flattered by your comment and compliment but thank you so much that means so much to me um, it's just that i'm of brown skin so if i'm gonna have to blush i might be turning purple or black i don't know what i'm gonna be turning but it, it is gonna be fun to see that happen but thank you so much i can see other people jumping in reginald it's great to have you betty it's great to have you 
Frank, it's good to have you. Sonia, it's good to have you. Thank you for making out time to be here. It's a civilized presence. Of course, you are in the right place at the right time. So how this works, Mr. Yan, really is to get started with the questions and begin the conversation. Sometimes we have a question from the audience. I'll pass it back to you, but we'll just get things going. And of course, my very first question for you this morning would be, uh, what does civility mean to you? What is civility? What is kindness? What is politeness? What is um, um, etiquette or um, and just being good to other people, the golden rule, whatever that you want to refer to right as, what does it mean to you? Over to you, Mr. Yan. Louisa, all of the above, <laughs> and then some. Of course, you know you, you, you've you've been there for a, for a while, and 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 you know has all kinds of guests on. But for me, uh, yeah, um, civility it 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 means respect others. Uh, there, there is one thing my 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 partner and business partner Arthur Moore always talks about when we do com uh, diversity and inclusion training, and I said, you know, um, you don't need to like everybody who stands in front of you. But the, uh, the ability to show respect to them is a d direct reflection on your character, not on theirs. So I think one of the first things for me, uh, civility, is if we can just show a little bit more respect and understanding to the people standing in front of us. I think that's a good start. And also a good start is to know that we don't need to like everybody, but we can be respectful while they stand in front of us. And then, as you mentioned earlier on, uh, certainly don't start talking about them once they, they leave, because all that kind of negativity and gossip, gossip, I don't feel we need to add to it. There is enough in the world already. But compassion, compassionate leadership and compassion, empathy, um, you know, listen, just plain listening. Uh, we, we, we work with values and, and, and listening is such an amazing one because if you ask everybody if they're a good listener, many people put up their hand and once they finally realize that at best they hear, but they don't listen because we're so caught up with, with, with these kind of things and, uh, you know, electronics and, and, and phone calls and WhatsApps and all the kind of stuff now. And, you know, we, not, we don't even pay attention to each other and just uh, make eye contact with people when they're talking to us. And, yeah, and, and our kids are, the, are, are noticing this. They say, Dad, Dad, you know, yes, I'm listening, but you're on, the, you're on your laptop or on, on Facebook or doing something more important than that. And you're not even looking at them. And the kids realize you're not listening to them anymore. So what are we teaching our kids? So we need to... I think we, we, at very best, we need to go back to basic human intrinsic values. And, and I mean, I, I actually wrote down 10 of them as well for later on to, to say that, that, that these are some of the, 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 the solutions we need to take into consideration when we want to solve problems, not just in our, uh, uh, globally, but we start at home. When we, when we can start at home and be more respectful, we listen more, we pay attention, we, we have a more positive attitude because you also said the golden rule. I've even got a platinum rule, which is not mine either, but it, it is not only do, do until others as they do to you or, or uh, treat others as you want to, uh, want to be treated. No, treat others as they want to be treated, which, mm. is, which goes even a step further because we quite often, uh, how do we want to be treated? If we can really just ask a few simple, humble questions in a, from the other person, then we find out how they would like to be treated, how they learn, how they um, communicate, and then talk into that. So, th so we build better relationships because whether we're in sales, whether we're in speaking, whether we're in youth development, where, wherever we are in the world, the whole world turns and, and gets more connected, the better relationships we can build with each other. And as you know, our dear friend and mentor, John Maxwell said, uh, leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. So the only way we get influence with other people, not over, is build better relationships. And, and you know, he talks about it in so many different books, the five levels of leadership, the better uh, relationships you build, the, be the better leader you become. Great leaders ask, uh, uh, good leaders ask great questions, intentional living, the list goes on and on. But, you know, we need to start giving each other a little bit more time. It's the biggest commodity we, we misuse in the world because of the electronics and the, the amount of times um, adults and children alike are on their their uh, social media and on their laptop, not because they have to. Like, I mean, I, I sit on my laptop a fair bit because I'm preparing jobs and, and trainings and things like that, but because we can't leave them alone anymore. What would we do? So the, those are some of the values that I think are, are necessary for us to be more civil be more understanding and also see things from another person's perspective. I always use the beach ball in a training room and I, I see and, and I say, who's right? What do you see and who's right? We can all be right. 
but we we all want to be right uh, so maybe we should actually take a step back and ask each other a few basic questions so we can start to understand the other side of the the the, the the problem, the solution, it might be an equally good solution, but so often we are caught up, especially as men, we are caught up because we are right and we're going to prove we're right and it doesn't matter what somebody else says after a while anymore. So asking questions, listening to each other and see things. Uh, sometimes we need to walk in somebody else's shoes for a while before we can actually really make a, 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 a comment. And if we're going to have something, to, if, if we're going to have nothing good to say, it's best to say nothing at all. Thank you so much. I, I think that is such, you know, you were able to um, really expand on that. And and guys, viewers, you see that I bring the best here. When I tell you I have the best, I, I'm not playing games, guys. So I have the best. And that's, I mean, you've heard him for yourself. Um, and, you know, when you talked about the platinum rule, um, I think of the platinum rule as being interesting. And, and I have a little... Um, thing to add on to the platinum rule, because sometimes people might not know what is the best thing for them. So I always feel that the platinum rule might can only succeed if that person is emotionally intelligent and that's gonna take us to another session for another day. But, you know, it's just my own thinking. And I'm just like, I don't really know what's the best thing for them um, at that point. Because for example, if you're working with somebody who is probably sick or mentally unstable, what they want for themselves at that point might not be the right thing. So I, you, you know, you see there's still so many gaps on us for us to continue to expand and take it to the next level. But you, of course, what's important is that people get what the message is. And thank you so much uh, for mentioning that. And I'm gonna go back to the audience. I have Luis is right here from um, um, Kenya. It's good to have you in the house, my brother. Thank you. I have uh, Beth Maranger. Um, from here is who is here from Kenya as well. Uh, thank you so much uh, for being here. Thank you. I also have um, Kiki. Um, Kiki is joining us. Thank you so much. And let us know where you're joining from because I love to mention your country and your city. Um, just to let our guests know that we have people from different places who are hanging up with us this morning. Of course. Is impacting the lives of different people. Yes, from Nairobi, Kenya. My brother is here. Thank you. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go back to the deal of today. And of course, we're discussing about bullying. I tried to put a poll on, on this um, a video. And my question was, have you ever been bullied before? Have you experienced bullying? Have you bullied somebody? Have you been a victim? Have you watched it happen? Because if you watch it happen, you didn't do anything about it. I'm ready to nail you down right now. I welcome Sierra all the way from Dubai. <laughs> Great, it's good to have everyone in the house. So come on in, give us your contributions. Let me learn from you. Have you been bullied before? Have you experienced it? What do you think about bullying? Do you think it's something that we have to work on? Um, how did they affect you? Did they affect a member of your family? Of course, I know that everyone knows about bullying from when you were a child or when you're growing up. Bullying is even happening in the workplaces, guys, and that's what we're going to be talking about. Sometimes when people think about bullying, especially I'm of African descent. So when you think about bullying, you're thinking about someone giving you a blow in your face and giving you a slap. But you know what? Bullying has gone beyond that. Bullying is now our neighbors. Bullying is in the workplace. Bullying can be expressed through verbal harassment, uh, unconscious bias. I don't understand you, and I really don't care to understand you. And of course, I just decide to behave in a way that doesn't really matter. And that's the form of bullying. So they're different, and bullying is happening on social media. Everyone is on social media. But my question is always, do you have the right skills to thrive in social media? Are you picking the right sort of content in social media? I know it's supposed to be socializing on social media, but what are you doing here? Our kids are on social media. Um, we have our clients on social media, and so many things are happening here. You know, another form of bullying is like um, um, a mental abuse. 
sometimes verbal abuse, and I find it a lot. I'm of African descent, and I always love to use myself as an example. Because I remember growing up, sometimes people are so fast to kind of like give, you know, just put a level of you. You know, because you did something wrong, it's like, oh, you would have uh, not had. What's wrong with you? That's a form of bullying. So parents, come on in, because we have to have this conversation, because I just realized that you've been bullying your children at home. So, I mean, I know that you didn't know better, and of course you can learn how to do better, and that's why I brought in the experts all the way from South Africa to really educate us on why bullying, we have to fight the elephant in the room. The elephant is bullying. It's showing up everywhere. It's showing up in families. It's showing up in the community. It's showing up in the workplace. It's showing up even in churches, in your worship places. It's showing up everywhere. Culture has created a platform for bullying. Sometimes the young people are not around to say a word. Nobody wants to listen to them. It's a form of bullying. It's no. So you see that you know, somehow you, know, you have experienced bullying without even knowing that it was bullying. And that's the conversation we're going to have today. So yeah, let's just this bullying. This is going to take you to my next question to you. Of course, research has shown us some interesting numbers that more than 50% of students are affected by bullying by the time they leave the education system. And also, that a lot of young people are committing suicide and would rather, you know, die through, you know, maybe killing themselves or taking their lives or rather than go through some form of bullying. Now, how can you really shed some light on this, uh, being an expert who is working a lot with young people and parents and families? What can we do to help to eradicate this problem? How can we help? How can the school system help? How can the parents at home help? How can we be part of just kind of um, working with those young people and, and just creating an awareness of why this shouldn't be happening? And of course, um, feel you know, if you want to share your example or um, any story that you might have through the work that you do. Over to you, Dan. Yes, thank you very much. And you're so right in, in all of it. You know, it, it, it happens everywhere. And, you know, we, we as you were, I mean, I, I don't read a newspaper. I haven't bought a newspaper for more than 30 years because what go, comes in goes out. So um, uh, I don't want that in my uh, head every day. I haven't got a television either, but I still find out things because when people actually, if something bad enough that happens that I need to know, well, somebody will tell me. And I don't need to know everything every day, but I'm very aware because I have a lot of these discussions. And, you know, we, 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 we see in the news all the kind of the riots, the murders, the gun violence and all that kind of stuff. But we, we this is one of the challenges. Uh, bullying is one of the things that because we don't really know how to deal with it. Say, I, I see all the pros and the cons about the guns laws, and I don't even want to get into it because I don't do politics. Uh, but I mean, people can talk about that because one says we need to take the guns away the other ones we need to keep the guns for the second amendment and all this kind of stuff and you know but bullying and uh, we have we have uh, i was uh, well I, I was uh, bullied as a little child and uh, well i wasn't quite so little actually i was a bit a bit wide because of my i was very overweight and very short so i was kind of round but then my daughter had the same challenges in school when she was 15 and she got bulimia, bulimia because of it and, and um, then my granddaughter, uh, I, I had the same in the school I was in, and I, I had a, the pleasure, but I had the opportunity to actually go to her school and sit in about what happened afterwards, because the police were involved and social workers. But the deputy said to me, and it stuck with me, he said, you know, the government in the UK also, they say we uh, have zero tolerance to bullying, but they don't give us any tools or any skills on how to go about it. And on top of that, Quite often there is a, there is antisocial behavior and and teachers are now scared not only of the, the bullies but more so of the parents coming to school and 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 you know wondering what you're doing with their child so just just for 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 the listeners to, to give a little bit of information I, I I have a few statistics here and and let's let's start with this statistic from America 2016-17 it says 15 percent of bullying is cyberbullying 63 percent of bullying victims do not report it. So how do they know 15% is, is up to, but 160,000 students stay at home every single day because of bullying. 25% of all kids 
bullied by other children in school. And in 2016, saw a 7% increase in bullying from 2015. Then I looked in the UK. It says within the past year, there's a, a survey by uh, Ditch the Label, because they want to ditch the bullying label, a great, great group of people who are trying to help. They, um, they said within the last year, one and a half million young people in the UK experienced bullying. Half of them never told anybody because they, 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 they fear, they're embarrassed, or they have no faith in the system to help them. Japan, uh, study 2015, 2016. I'm just giving some numbers for people to, me, to, to see that it's real. 224 and a half thousand report, reports of school bullying in Japan. And there it's different from most places because they, do it in, they don't do it in ones or twos, but it's mostly done in groups, which is unusual. South Africa, where I am, not only is bullying once more front and center of the highest uh, the biggest problem facing our schools, even more people are identifying it as a problem right now than a year ago. And that, is, that just happened recently. And then the, on top of that, there was uh, uh, from a crisis prevention website for in, in America. Uh, they, see, when we were younger, they say kids will be kids and they, they do these kind of things. And, and I had a, a conversation with my, my friends and I said, when we were younger, we would just go and find the bully, beat them senseless. So they would never do it again. But that's not the answer. But I had a, a very negative, of course, being bullied early in my life, I had a very negative outlook on bullies. But I know hurt people hurt people and they need help as well. So that's also something we need to discuss. But it said, um, uh, they, they said that was a, a part of growing up, but yet every beating, death, death threat and 24 hour, four hour harassment via technology, bullying has become a dangerous, life-threatening epidemic and children cannot get away from it. And that's from, I, I, I feel privileged because when I was younger, they had no mobile phones, so I could sit and hide in my bedroom. Children cannot hide from bullying anymore and it's getting worse and worse. So overall it says one in two people have been, one in, one in two youth have been bullied at some point. One in five have been bullied within the past year and one in 10 gets, have, have been bullied in the last week. Then I look for bullying definition and uh, Webster says abuse and mistreating of someone vulnerable by someone stronger more powerful and another one must seek to harm intimidate or coerce someone perceived as vulnerable there you have bullying then you also talked about suicide and you know uh, nick vujicic talked about it as well that four uh, three years ago four thousand four hundred children committed suicide now it's it, that's that's what we know of that doesn't talk to pay about the picture of all the youth and adults to like, because you talked about it in the workplace as well, all the youth who are mentally and, and physically in, in ways destroyed for the rest of their life because of the, the lack of know-how, the lack of support, the lack of, 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 of people being able to help them and stop this, this, this epidemic, I call it. And, and they, they connected also to uh, depression because around the world there's now 300 million people by the World Health Organization seen as being in, in, in high depression and, and a lot of them are, are youngsters and suicide rate because of depression uh, between 15 and 27 is the second highest death rate of, of, of anything that happens in the world. We're talking about cancer and all other kinds of diseases. The second highest is suicide. People, young people taking their own life and we can go on and on and on. But I think this is enough for people to get a picture and I don't want to depress further because I looked on a lot of sites and, and I found these kind of statistics and the problems, but I found very few or too few sites where they actually provided real solutions. So what can we do? I sat together with an ex-principal uh, yesterday evening at the science fair in, in South Africa, which comes as people from all over the world come in here, uh, it's holidays just now. And we, we, we talk a lot about this kind of stuff. And he said, you know, uh, one of the biggest thing is we're losing teachers left, right and center because they don't want to be involved in this anymore. They can't handle the, 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 the bullying that happens, but also not only teachers bullying children, but children bullying teachers. And, and, and in Europe, I don't know what it's like in America, but there is so many rules in place now that the teacher has his hands tied. Now there is no, uh, you know, when we were younger, I just used to get a cloud around the air or get a duster thrown at me when, when I was doing things wrong. But there is restraints, lots of paperwork, there's challenges, there is pressure, uh, and everything adds to the whole epidemic and we just don't talk about it. And this is for me, so that, and I, th I think people get a picture, but then uh, there is signs. Before we can help, I think we need to look at the signs 
of bullying. And there is a lot of them. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I, I looked at at least uh, at, at some of them. Um, I actually wrote a chapter in the book maybe six years ago, and, and it was talking about breaking the barriers of, 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 uh, of bullying. And um, one of them, there is, there is some real signs, uh, physical, you know, look at your child when they come home. Have they got unexplained scars, bruises? Um, have they got, you know, scrapes of marks that, that they shouldn't have? You know, kids can fall and they do stuff, but I mean, um, and do they start covering up their bodies in warm, warm weather because they want to hide all this kind of stuff? Because it's so real that children are so fearful of the bullies and of, of, of peers that they don't want to talk about this. I mean, I had it with my daughter with bulimia. She hid it for so long, but eventually they get so thin, you can't, they, can, they can't hide it anymore. But loss of damage of personal belongings or, or, or you know, their lunch boxes go missing or the school bags get damaged, uh, that, uh, those kind of things. Um, children developing weird bathroom habits that before that they, they, you never notice it, but now they come home and the first thing they've got to do is run to the toilet. And it is because they don't want to go to the bathrooms at school anymore. They hold it in. So even something like that can tell that there is the real problem. Um, ch children avoiding social interaction. Be uh, so they don't um, take part in, in uh, after school sessions anymore. They don't uh, talk to their friends anymore. They become loners. Uh, and, and, you know, some people say, oh, well, they, they like to be alone. There might be a real reason why some of the children sit on their own rather than the fact that they want to be on their own. There might be reasons, and that's why... Uh, uh, something that we all, all need to do is, you know, when we see people and young people sitting on their own, go and have a look, you know, and ask them a simple question. How are you doing? And don't just say, when they say, fine, you just walk away. No, how are you really doing? You know, and, and then sit down and listen, because sometimes just being able to listen to another human being and youth alike, it might just save them. And not, not necessarily save their line, but it might just save them from harm, from further harm, because they need somebody that will actually really hear what they're saying and really take it in and and, and be em empathetic, you know, and, and show some compassion. Then there is ch change in eating habits. I already mentioned bulimia and anorexia. So some some children start binge eating or they, they lose their appetite altogether. Again, the stress is because in the they also know that at school, at the lunch rooms, they get, it's where they get bullied, their plates get turned over as they spe other kids spit in their dinner. All this kind of stuff happens. Uh, change in self-esteem, you know, uh, uh, they, they actually, they, their, their self-esteem goes down and they get mood swings, those kind of things. And I'm just mentioning a few, but these are real signs that your children get. Um, get. And the next one is, is self-destructive behavior. There is now, I think, uh, another survey I, I, I've, I've, I've been through, 23 to 25% now of the children who get bullied are into self-harming. They, 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 the self-destruct button is pushed in. And, and you know, you're... you're you add depression to this of, of circumstances and environment and you're only one step away from 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 something really bad happening but i mean self-harming is is another very serious thing that we we as parents are often so busy in our life to try to provide and do the best for our children that actually what we're not doing is spending enough time watching what is happening with those with those very children that we're supposed to be protecting and um, Declining grades, another one, you know, how all of a sudden they were A grade students because there is a, quite a few reasons why why bullying takes place. Some of them because some kids get high grades, so they call them all kinds of names because they're the swats, the teachers, pets and all that kind of stuff, but also low grades because of that pressure. So the grades start dropping. Behavior range after being online, and we talked about it already, cyberbullying. Uh, it says 25%, but it, it is so so much worse because remember, 63% of kids don't tell. So, I mean, we, that is the least we know about. Then loss of interest of hobbies. You know, they had hobbies before and they don't want to do this anymore. They stop after school activities. They they, they can become withdrawn, but all of, they had hobbies that they had, they, they, they did all kinds of things and all of a sudden it doesn't happen anymore. And then the, the, the only other one I want to mention, mention is, is trouble sleeping. You know, stress, um, tiredness, and, and nightmares are real signs that there, are, there is more happening than just your ordinary child, who ordinary happy child. Now, I know there is all, the, all kinds of stresses to perform and in school, and, and, you know, we need to do better, and that stresses as well. But these, um, I think, 10 or 11 points are real areas that we need to start looking as parents, as adults, as teachers, you know, what is actually happening. 
happening with our children. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. and that you know we need to spend some time, even if it's if it's five more minutes every day to 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 interact with our children. And uh, mobile phones shouldn't be at the, at the dinner table anymore. There should be. Uh, uh, Nick Woodyard did said that him and his family, there will be no mobile phones. They, they put them away. There will be no mobile phones at the dinner table. It's probably the only place where we can still have a conversation because one of the other things is we need to talk. We need to we need to start communicating, and communication is dying on its feet because of mo uh, mobile phones and all the. I mean, we have the opportunity to have the world in our living rooms now, like you have the world in your living room. Uh, because of everything you do and talk about civility and, and bring these important subjects to the table. But the, there is a place for it. And the, the danger is now that many, many youngsters, when they leave school, they can't even go to a job interview anymore because they don't know how to communicate properly. We need to start at least for some time a day communicating face to face anymore. I mean, I, I see children WhatsApp and are, 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 are sending messages to each other and they stand beside each other. And I thought, OK, uh, I'm old fashioned. Let's. Why don't you just talk to the other one? And they laugh at me. What do I know? I'm I'm old. So uh, you know. But I mean, there is so many real pressures and problems now. Uh, I also, we, we had big posters in the UK. Um, think before you click, because cyberbullying. You know, when you send a picture, uh, it might be in good faith, but when you send a picture, and and it happens, all kinds of pictures from from nudity because to the boyfriend or uh, and he thinks it's funny to show his mates or or things you say like in whatsapp and once it's gone it's gone you cannot take it back it's the same with talking to to others and you know i i, I see this as well most of the uh, many of the bullies they like it when there is an audience but they actually pick on on what who they perceive as, as weaker when they're on their own so there is many things that we can do but the first thing is having the awareness then starting the conversations and sometimes it needs more than a conversation but we need to get involved as adults because even at the workplace I, i've seen this big guy the same height as me six foot four he was bullying his workforce he had done this for 30 years because the the way it used to be done you get you do what you need to do and get to do it now and blah 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 and and, and he was threatening with with dismissal if they didn't if they they talked about things that were wrong in the workplace you know safety aspects and things like that and there's another thing. There is no such thing as an innocent bystander. I, 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 and I, I get it, the fear, especially when there's weapons involved. I get the fear, but we can at least report this. That if you, as if, if there's young people watching, at least if you, if you, it takes courage. It takes courage for the bullied person to stand up and say, no more, stop. I don't want this. Uh, or at least walk away because violence is not an, uh, 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 the, the option and usually the, the, when they pick on younger. But already, um, if you see any form of bullying, whether it's physical or verbal, report it. Report it to somebody. No, the, the, the school should make people available who, who, who are there for, for bullying to be reported to. And I say it could be any adult, but make at least some people available uh, at, at, at the right times because um, one area is we in schools especially where at, and most of the bullying happens and it says you know when you, you already mentioned it I think it's 54 percent of youth by the time they leave the education system have been uh, uh, involved one way or another are affected by bullying how does that stand up and we are we're always looking at leaders and we need to create the leaders of tomorrow today and provide them with the skills and the tools yet we are actually doing too little to give them the right skills and tools and to give them that that one thing that how, whatever changes outside of, of 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 our situations outside because i get it there is a lot of depression because you can study for a job that in five years doesn't exist anymore we can't help with that at the moment but what we can help with is build the person there is now more children leaving with a low self-esteem leaving the education system with a low self-esteem than ever before at least we can build the person and if we build the person the person will build his life you know but there is a lot we need to do and and you know students we, we all need to take responsibility for this but students also need to take a lot of responsibility for the things they say the things they do to their fellow human beings because i laughed when i was little when when people called me all kinds of names i laughed on the outside i was happy i was very miserable in in, in inside and 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 here's another thing the bullying sometimes stops and i talk about it uh, when i do my talk about sticks and stones because 
uh, that's that's crazy saying came from many years ago sticks and stones may break your bones but words will never hurt you that is the biggest load of rubbish i've ever heard and i've experienced it and i say you know the words you you have power in your voice i'm now also helping people to get a voice and, and and create help them create their story so they can bring it out in the world whether it's on the local stage on the bigger stage because i think we need to talk more about the things that have happened and the and and, and the stories that uh, les brown always says everybody's got a story and it needs to get out because you can positively impact people by the story you've got so power the words are very powerful negative as well as positive you know, and so we we need to be very careful, and 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 it's a general we because we all need to do. It. We need to be very careful in the kind of things we say, and and uh, you know, the fellow students might laugh, but I know that uh, when the when the the laughing stops, when the smiling stops, when they go home, and and the depression sets, and you don't know what happens. I say to young children now when I talk about bullying, and I, and and they watch a Nick Widget video who talks about he uh, was bullied obviously because he had no arms, no legs, and. And he tried to commit suicide a couple of times when he was 10 years old. He stopped because he could not do this thinking what his parents and his brother would be go through if he did it. But he rolled that around in the bath a few times. But he talks about this as well. And I said, you know, we can make young, very young children uh, at a very early age aware of what is right and what is not right and what what the kind of things to say. Uh, so we have we have um, we, we have these students. And in my story, uh, what happened is, and my daughter, uh, although she's now 20 years further from, from the bulimia, she still has, she's a lot better and she's an amazing mom, an amazing friend to have, but she, uh, she still has some issues 20 years on. Because what happened to me, and, and that is part of the story where a lot of people connect, at 12 year olds, at five year old, uh, at, at 11 years old, I was as wide as I was tall. And at 12 year old, I grew to this height six foot four. I never have grown since. The Dutch are, are the tallest nation in the world. And I, I added to that. Nobody after that wanted to call me lanky or anything, but the bullying stopped. But here is it. And this is what happens to a lot of people, whether it's abuse, whether it's bullying, physical or mental abuse, whether it's anything more uh, severe than that. And um, the bully stopped the, the bully in here started because mm -hmm. i could stay i i never saw all that luggage that came all that luggage i, I took in and i smiled on the outside i was a class clown the bullying mm -hmm. inside me stopped started until the point where i had an ulcer when i was 16 and at that, at that age maybe children now are much more stressed out but at that age the doctor said you know it's entrepreneurs busy people um uh, ceos they get stressed out and they get ulcers not the children and, that, and at 17, I decided to put a line in the sand and say, I can't go on in my life like this. And luckily, at the same time, somebody happened uh, to give me a personal development book. And, and there, my that journey started. But it is what happens when the door shuts. What happens when people are, are, are uh, when, when young people are in their bedrooms. When, I mean, we hear so many horror stories. And, and I, I only watched, the, the only reason I watched 13 Reasons Why. And I only watched one one series. I didn't even know there was a second series, but I watched that series because somebody told me about it. Uh, no, I, I was involved in this kind of stuff, and says you need to watch this. And it, it it tells so many stories. It's an American program, of course, but it tells so many stories of how many people are involved and how much we don't do about it. And yes, it created. Uh, luckily, it created a, a bigger awareness. But that awareness is not big enough, and we can keep talking all day long, but we're not doing enough. So there is there is some solutions for 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 children already you know first of all is when the bullies start they need to say stop don't touch just say stop i don't like this we need to find a voice but i it, it is very difficult but we need to help our children to say this you know when it does say stop and if you walk away and if it happens tell somebody because by not telling and you only add to the problem because the bullies will bully other people as well and if it's not you it'll be somebody else Bullies need to be stopped, but l let me say something right here. Bullies need help because mm. it's quite often uh, I have seen, I've heard stories from kids who were bullied and they went to another school. And the first thing they did is they became the bully. He said, I want to get in there first. I want to make sure it never happens again. It's understandable to up to a point it is, but it is, it is the reality. Some, uh, some hurt people start hurting people. And we don't know what happens what happens in their home and social life and everything else outside why they bully they they need help as much as the, bu the bullied which at first i didn't understand of course but now i do so it somebody needs to be told um when you see bullying stand with the person 
it is always better if you if you are with in, in, in small groups because small groups normally don't get bullied. It's individuals. But if you see it, as I said, there is no such thing as an innocent bystander. There was a video uh, once done by two people, uh, one bullying another, just to see what the reaction of bystanders would be. And very few people, some people looked, some people had some word. There was actually, there was two men. And it's, it's a young lady eventually stepped in. Uh, and, and uh, you know, they, they showed it a video afterwards, of course. But so many people see these things happening, uh, young and old, and we do nothing. And, and I must admit, for a, for, for a while, when I saw this bully at work, I didn't do anything. And all of a sudden, I said, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm having this message and I'm not doing anything about it. As soon as I realized, I stopped them. I just said, this is not going on no further. I even told them that the, the, the law is on our side. The law is on your side. If you are getting bullied, the law is on your side. But the law will also help the, help the bully. Because so many, there is uh, those who are bullies. Uh, now, the statistic... It was a horrendous statistic that, that I think it's more than 60% of those who were in, uh, getting bullied or bullied ended up in jail after they left school because of what happened afterwards, you know, and, and on either side. But the bullies more so than the, the, the ones. So we do a disservice to the bullies as well if we don't do our best to help them. And yes, everybody yeah. feels the yeah. empathy for, for the, the, the ones that get bullied, but they very rarely, they, they hate the bullies. But you know, it's it's mm. most there is a lot of issues behind that, and and it's 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 bravery, uh, putting a brave face, and wanting to get in there, and their anger, their frustration, the depression. It's sometimes their only way they they know how, and sometimes the beatings they get at home, they are so angry. That, you know, so we need to seriously think about both sides, and and you know, it's um, in the schools as well. Um, there is some schools, and and I'm. I'm, I'm not in our school. There was a, a, a in, in America a campaign. It's called "Not in Our School," and they had this whole awareness of bullying. And I, I think every week we sh they should be at 15 minutes minimum talked about bullying, the the, the different kinds, the cyber bullying, the, the the physical bullying, and what cannot happen in the stairwells and the and the corridors, what cannot happen in the bathrooms, uh, and and in the classrooms. That it is not no longer acceptable. We need to start showing a bit more respect. Then there was um, other ones, and I, I'm just having a quick look through. Um, well, this, we need this is, this is we, so. We need... uh, yes, I'm so sorry about that. I I Hello? just had. Um, Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. I'm just trying to get back to the audience and we're just going to continue with the conversation. And so if you're just getting here for the first time, it's a civilized presence. Uh, you are in the right place. I can see some more people coming in. Uh, Sister Arlene, it's good to have you here from Tennessee. Good to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, Pharrell is here. Thank you for making out time to be here, Pharrell. I don't know if you're in the US or if you're in Australia. I don't know, but thank you so much for making out time. Uh, welcome, e former. It's good to have you in the house. Ardi is here. Thank you. Thank you for all your support. Thank you for making this happen. And guys, if you're just joining the conversation uh, right now, you know, the big topic here, which concerns everyone, is breaking through the barriers of bullying. And I had asked a question at the beginning of the session. I asked, have you been bullied or have you been a bully yourself? Or have you even watched it happen? Have you had someone who has been a victim, who has experienced it? Has it affected someone that you know? We want to talk about it. How can we bring help? Because every single day, I mean, the numbers, the data is really concerning uh, to see how many children get to drop out of school because of bullying how people have had to uh, commit suicide because of bullying. And of course, we're gonna continue the conversation, but I mean, we wanna throw some light to the workplace. And Ian, you know, a, a really a big part of um, uh, workplace incivility is really bullying in the workplace. And honestly, that is so, I mean, when I saw the numbers that had to do with that, I realized that it's really, increasing and getting to epidemic levels. So I'm just thinking like, how can we help in the workplace? Because sometimes the bullying in the workplace is really because of like uh, power struggles, like uh, unconscious buyers. Sometimes diversity in the workplace is an issue. And so many organizations are becoming global. So they need to learn 
how can we work with these different people, different unique cultures in their space? They have to know how to do it because, you know, something might be acceptable in your country, in your culture, in your space, in your religion, but it might not be acceptable with somebody else. You have to learn how to live with other people. So, you know, my, my next question for you really would be, you know, bullying in the workplace, of course, which is the reality, we cannot run away from it. How can we really provide some kind of solution? What are some steps that you think that we can take in the workplace um, to be able to embrace um, other people? Um, because I find that, you know, I used to live in Canada and um, Canada, of course, is supposed to be a very diversified um, country, in quotes, but sometimes people still struggle with accepting the next person. So, you know, a lot of people love the buzzword diversity and inclusion, but really they do not understand what it means in its entirety, because if you're going to um, be uh, culturally competent, then you must be ready to embrace everyone. It doesn't matter shape, size, form, color. It doesn't matter if they're white, blue, pink, yellow, green. We are all part of the human race. And so if bullying is now in the workplace, this is also going to affect the younger ones. Because can you imagine a parent who is being bullied in the workplace? It's going to get back home being so aggressive and so angry and so bitter that he's going to pour that onto the kids. And what happens? You are the first role model to the children. So the children now embrace that character and believe that that's the best thing to do. And welcome, my Didion. It's great to have you here in the house. So can you just share with our audience, what can we do in the workplace? Because it's concerning. You know, when we think about bullying, people think bullying is all about children alone. No, in the workplace, it's really bad. What can we do in the workplace really to reduce, you know, uh, what is happening? This is so terrifying. Um, it is uh, bullying. Of course, the form of incivility that's affecting people's health. People get depressed. Um, bullying is leading to mental illness. Bullying is leading to depression. It's leading to suicide. It's leading to all form of negative things. So we've seen that there's nothing good about bullying. So we need to punch bullying in the face and throw it out. So what do we do really at this point that we have been thriving and just you know, having fun with bullying and it's becoming a part of us and people just think it's a knob when it's not and it's killing people slowly. What can we do? Over to you, Jan. Yes, again, a, a great question and a great explanation. And, and I, I mean, I can feel, always feel your passion about this as well, that, uh, you know, first of all, as people say, well, you can always leave. And, and, and leaving is not an option uh, because uh, the bully doesn't stop. Uh, if you just because you leave, they'll pick on somebody else, and they probably pick on other people anyway. Uh, you know, of course, having a voice. Uh, you know, the the work culture, and and, and now um, um, we're 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 getting all kinds of laws, left, right, and center, and uh, uh, civil rights, and all that kind of stuff. First of all, you mentioned about uh, diversity, we, and and you know we work with diversity and inclusion as well. And, and Arthur, who, who joined us, he's an expert in uh, in this. He's done this for more than twenty years, and I've learned a lot about this. And I know we talked about this uh, a while back as well. You know, we are not only insensitive to other races, religions, historical uh, differences, um, um, colors sports affiliation even you know we, we i mean i've never seen so much violence because of a, a somebody kicking a ball around the park and 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 and, and the other person uh, um kicking it back and yet there is there is violence off the field because of of the team you support but i mean in the workplace all the all the all the all the intercultural interracial and uh, the different religious and atheists and everything and we're all together yet um you would think that it you know it is best to all work together in, in the best possible way so we can actually, if we uh, produce well, if there is less absenteeism, which there is, it's increasing absenteeism, it's illnesses, it's, it's lower work rates because, you know, when you, when you are sad and you were depressed, you don't work to your best. Um, violence outside the workplace, and you mentioned already, these people go home. So 
uh, and what happens there is the, the cycle continues. You know, I'm never going to be like my father. The amount of times I've heard that, and yet I, when they look back and say, and I'm exactly like my father. And that's not a compliment either because they, and not personally, but I mean, I, I, I'm like my father as well. And, and, and he's a great inspiration to me because he's eight, he just turned 82 and he still, he still works for himself. He loves what he does. Bless him. But um, it, it, um, we need, first of all, we have a voice. There is nobody at the workplace can threaten you with, you know, if you say something, uh, this is going to happen. Uh, so we need to start speaking up and we need to start speaking up for each other. Because when I told you about the bully, I stopped at work. I only found that afterwards, all these stories came to me. Yeah, he did this to me and he did that. And I've been saying, there are so many of you. Why did you not? Yes, because we're scared of our losing our job. And, and that's a reality, especially with unemployment rising and, and uncertainties rising. People are feared to speak up. But you either part of the solution or you're part of the problem. And it might be a harsh thing to say, especially for adults. You know, if we can tell young children, uh, when, when, when I go and do programs with them, and I said to them, I say, you know, um, you never know what, what your friend is, 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 what goes on. And how would you feel if you said something really ugly to your friend and tomorrow they don't come to school anymore? I leave it at that. I don't, I don't say that they take their life, but they don't come to school anymore because of, of something you said. How would you feel? How would you feel if they said it to you? Now, this goes in the other the same. You know, how would you feel because you think you're funny in front of your mates at work and you say something to a person and tomorrow he's not there anymore? For whatever, and, and, and whether he just left or whatever, you're even just quitting the job because of you were just the last, the last, the, the last bit, the, the bucket flew, uh, filled, overflowed, and I had enough. So have a voice. We need to have real time discussions about bullying at work. And it's not name and shame them. It is certainly name them. And, and again, like with, with children, they need help too. And they need to know that there is, uh, and, and, and I think as the bullies, one of the things they can always do is apologize for the behavior they had. We are here now, we can't change what you did in the past. We're here now, you can apologize for the people, to the people you have mistreated in, uh, verbally or, or, or mentally. And at least it's a, it's a step on the right path. It's a hard one because it takes courage, I get that. But also, we are pack animals, yet when something like that happens, every, it's each, every person uh, for themselves. So we need, to, we need to really start addressing this. The same as in the school, zero tolerance. There is, there is workplaces, zero tolerance. I, I, and I even said to the guy, if, you're, if your boss, uh, and we were as, working as, 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 uh, as subcontractors, he says, if your boss will condone what you're doing right now, I'm, I'm going to not only go to, to the police, I'm going to go to social media. And, and uh, let's see how many co contacts you'll still get after this, because it's got to stop right now. I, say, I, I was always smiling at work. I say, I'm not smiling today, by the way. I'm not, uh, this is not funny. This is something that's serious. But it took me a little while to realize it, but people have a voice. People need to say, say themselves, this is not acceptable. You don't have to start shouting and swearing and, and abusing back because that doesn't make it right. But this is not acceptable. I want you to stop right now. If this does not change, I will go and to go to HR or go further and whatever I need to go, but this will have to stop. And if you, you can threaten me, but I can't live like this, it's, it's affecting me. So people need to have the voice, but also people around them need to have the voice. You know, we need to talk about it. We need to help each other. We, we need to do this together. We can't do it on our own. Sometimes it's difficult, especially uh, when we've already got a low self-esteem and then somebody throws this at you as well and says, I'm not worthy anymore. And before we know, we're another statistic. The, you know, I, I heard statistics about suicide, and it, I know it's very dangerous to connect suicide to bullying, but there is a connection that, that we cannot deny any longer, and, and it happens too often. But we need to be very careful because um, there, is there could be depression, there could be environmental circumstances, there could be in debt, there could be all kinds of stuff going on that we don't know about, but it certainly can be a real contributing factor to people actually harming themselves or taking their lives, or going out and taking many other lives that i mean they I, i'm not saying if you're a bully you're gonna actually kill kill many other people but it is it, it is a, a factor that is built in there so we all need to take a little bit more responsibility for the people for ourselves first and foremost because you can't give what you haven't got so we need to develop ourselves but also we need to help and support the people around us better and, and, and whether it's at the workplace or in a, in a social, uh, you know, it's, it's also with groups of work outside, people outside work, and we can laugh at somebody else because of what they wear. Uh, I mean, appearance, 
is one of the biggest things, especially with youth. But I mean, even even with with adults, I've heard so many things, and I said, you know, if you have nothing good to say about the person, don't say anything at all. That's the best thing you can do. I totally agree with you. If you have nothing good to say, you know, don't bother saying it. It has to be <laughs> civil. It has to be kind. It has to be good. Or if not, don't talk about it. And guys, I have really, really enjoyed the conversation today. I don't know about you, and we have a lot of great comments um, in the, you know, from the audience. Uh, Yan, everyone is so excited to have you here, and we are learning uh, so much. Thank you so much, Ardi. It's so good to have you in the house, and Alicia, all the way from Trinidad and Tobago. Wow! Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for making our time. Uh, to be here today. This is so much fun, guys. We are here every Mondays and Fridays. I, I was away for a little bit, and um, I'm excited to be back now. We had a loss in the family, and so I really did miss all of you, and um, I'm so excited. And let me tell you, we have so much great sessions lined up for you, just like this one. So you want to go back to this video. There's so much great content here. I am going to watch this video again myself. Now, if you have been bullied before, you've experienced bully, you know about someone, don't, don't start telling them things like, I don't know what to do. It's okay. Um, it's going to go away. Now you've learned. Try to have a conversation. When you notice some kind of difference in the attitude, in the character of your child, their demeanor, find out what's going on. Begin to communicate more with your children. And don't say, Louisa, I don't have my own biological children. That doesn't count. Okay, everyone is a parent. As long as you're an adult, you are a parent, either to your own kids or to the children around you, someone in your neighborhood. Try to speak to them, find out what's going on. We have to be able to talk about it. If we cannot talk about it, then we cannot deal with it. And whether it's in the workplace, please do not accept it as norm. Try to report, try to put down something, write a mail to the HR, let someone know. If we do not bring it up, they're gonna to continue to do the exact same thing. And welcome, Trent, it's great to have you. Guys, if you're just joining us for the first time, I wanna say that you're kind of late to the party, but you will have access to this video um, on my page. It's gonna be on YouTube later today on Louisa Akaiso. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel and you would have access to all the videos there. I'm also on Instagram. It's uh, So Unique Experts. I will have this video on Instagram as well later on today. But I am so excited and I feel so honored that you made out time, Yan, to be here. And I'm going to say a very big thank you to you again and again, Yan. Thank you so much uh, for doing this for us. I learned so much. And of course, we're going to bring you back over and over again. Guys, let me tell you, there's so many great things about Yan. So many great things. And we're going to have to bring in um, Adi as well. There's so many great mm -hmm. things about this wonderful couple. Um, I cannot wait to see different things that we're going to be doing um, together. I'm so excited. And another thing that I was going to say is that, yes, let me let out a little surprise to you guys, because I know you've been asking me for the lunch um, hour sessions that we used to have, the book study. So what I have decided to do is really to launch out something called the Workplace Doctor Series. And that's a program that I have. And we're going to be teaching you everything that has to do with workplace solutions. Now, the interesting thing about that is that you're going to have to register, of course, um, so that we can take you to a special place, a special platform where you can learn um, more about you know, what you can do in the workplace and, of course, if you wanted to become a workplace ambassador as well, we're happy to help you with that. So civility in the workplace is a big portion of what I do. And I have so many people asking me about, you know, how can we use civility in the workplace? Uh, do you have programs in the workplace? Of course, we do have a lot of programs in the workplace. Um, and I'm happy to share that with you. So um, glue on to my page because we'll be having the post soon um, just to let you know what's coming up very soon about our workplace doctor series. That's going to be great. That's going to be fun. We'll have different trainers, but you just have to register to be part of the sessions. Um, I didn't say you're going to pay right now, but I said you're going to just register to be part of it because we, we have to be sure that we're working together and you're committed and you're doing the work so that, you know, that's the only way the transformation happens. If you don't do the work, it doesn't happen. 
Okay, so we have come to the end of the session and I really hate to let you go, but I have to be civil so that Yan can come back another time. <laughs> Yan, thank you so much. It was so good to have you here. And guys, we will see you again, same time on Monday, um, 8 a.m. or 8.30 a.m. I will announce uh, that time to you. So stay glued on my page and just watch out for what the new time will be. And thank you so much and have yourself a wonderful rest of the day. Bye for now. Bye for now. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure and a privilege. Thank you.